This is the day that God has made. Let us rejoice together and be glad in it. Welcome to this time of worship at Wellesley Mennonite Church. It is good to be together as we worship again. And even though you cannot be here with me, we are gathered in God's love. Bits and bytes of electronic technology connect us these days and make it possible for this service to come into your home. But it's really the love of God and the light of Christ that bonds us together in spirit, in purpose, and in unity as we worship. It's really the love of God and the light of Christ that allow us to live fully into the life of God with humanity. Just a few weeks ago, we celebrated the birth of Jesus. We told the stories of angels proclaiming the surprising news, unto you a savior is born. We wondered with the shepherds when they said, let us go and see this thing that the angels have said to us. And we pondered and we surrendered in faith along with Mary who said, nothing is impossible for God. Last week, the story of the wise men coming to worship Jesus made it known that God accepts worship from all kinds of people. Today, we encounter the love of God again, the love of God as it's poured out in the story of Jesus' baptism. And we hear the good news, you are deeply loved by God. You are deeply loved by God today. All week on this screen where you are joining in the worship service now, you've witnessed much bad news. There was the defeat of our junior hockey heroes. And then we heard that COVID cases were increasing. Violence rocked the United States Capitol. And more COVID cases. Students will remain at home doing online learning. And now there's more COVID cases. As we gather to worship today, may our minds and our hearts be transformed in the hearing of good news. As we turn towards the good news, I want to share a short poem. It's a blessing written by Jan Richardson. She says, begin here, beloved. Is there any other word needs saying? Any other blessing could compare with this name, this knowing, beloved? Comes like a mercy to the ear that has never heard it. Comes like a river to the body that has never seen such grace, beloved. Comes holy to the heart aching to be new comes healing to the soul, wanting to begin again, beloved. Keep saying it, and though it may sound strange at first, watch how it becomes part of you, how it becomes you, as if, as if you never could have known yourself to be anything else, as if you as if you could ever have been other than this, beloved. Join me in prayer. God, you have opened the heavens to come and live among us. We pray now that you will come among us today. Come to your collective people around the world. Come to your congregation called Wellesley Mennonite Church. Come to us as your beloved in the privacy of our homes. Come to us in our relationships this day. God, who opened the heavens, come again with your voice. Pierce our ears with the word, beloved. Baptize our hearts by calling us, beloved. Energize our bodies with the vision of being, beloved. Amen.
scripture reading this morning is from the Gospel of Mark, chapter 1. Listen carefully. This is God's word for us today. John the baptizer appeared in the wilderness, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And people from the whole Judean countryside and all from Jerusalem were going out to see him. And they were baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel hair, with a belt around his waist, and he ate locusts and wild honey. He proclaimed, the one who is more powerful than I is coming after me. I am not worthy to stoop and untie the thong of his sandals. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. In those days, Jesus from Nazareth of Galilee came and he was also baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn open and the spirit descending on him like a dove. And a voice came from heaven saying, you are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. If I remember correctly, it was the spring of 1975. I would have been 14 years old. Pastor Dennis Cressman poured the water. It ran, ran down my head and dress and soaked the red carpet around my knees. Dennis extended his hand and bid me to rise. Just as Christ had been raised from the dead, I too was invited to walk in newness of life. And that morning, I was also received as a member of Breslau Mennonite Church. For me, that meant participating in communion, and as a young teen, that was a big deal. My friends and I had prepared for baptism as a group. We met in the church library, surrounded by the wisdom of our tradition and our sacred story. My baptism class was encouraged to ask someone from the congregation to be our spiritual companion as we made our baptismal promises and took this step on our faith journey. I still recall my surprise. Unknown to each of us, we each chose the same person. All of us chose Brian Bauman, one of our youth sponsors. I don't recall Brian's words spoken to us that day, but when I ran into him about a year and a half ago at my spiritual director's funeral, I was aware that the respect I held for him and the care I had received remained strong. Forty-plus years of living a baptismal life. What do you remember about your baptism? I'd invite you to ponder that for a moment. What did you hear? What did you feel? What did you taste? Maybe there was a special family dinner on your baptism day. I expect I'm not alone feeling somewhat disoriented as we wade into the waters of Jesus' baptism. We have just come through Advent, during which time we prepared our hearts to receive the gift of Jesus anew. 
we celebrated Christmas, the birth of our Savior God in flesh appearing. And while our celebrations have been very different this year, they have been bright. We lit candles at home. We took in the nativity on the front lawn, a beautiful gift from our youth. We sang carols, and I expect we also overate. At our house, the tree is still up. And perhaps yours is too, with that yearning to hold on to the joy of the season amidst the reality of shutdown number two. Today we pause to consider what difference it all made. Our prayers, the rituals, confessions and carols. How are you transformed for having journeyed the road of Advent and Christmas? Or does it feel long behind you like that long Christmas to-do list? As our journey to the new year unfolds, we are entering the season in which we glean how the revelation of God's love in the person of Jesus changed and changes everything. As we dig into scripture these coming weeks, we will walk alongside the Messiah encountering Jesus' mission, his teaching, and how he reveals to us the character and the presence of God, Emmanuel, God with us. And we will encounter the overlapping edges of our story and God's story. Today's scripture begins with a man who was known as the Baptist. Mark's gospel doesn't begin with a narrative account, but rather with the story of John the baptizer. Some people are known by their profession. Branch manager Jamie, dental hygienist Dolores, or teacher Melissa. John was known as the baptizer. He had a significant ministry at the Jordan River. He invited people to repent of their sins and be baptized. And people responded. They came from Jerusalem and they came from all over Judea. They met at the river. John had a particular calling. He was to prepare the way for Jesus. And he had a distinctive fashion flair, didn't he? Camel's hair, a leather belt. Most people we meet in our biblical story don't include descriptions of what they wore, but John's fashion made its way into our sacred story. John the baptizer baptized people in the River Jordan, and he invited people to look at who they were. He asked them to take stock. People were invited to say they were sorry for the things they had done to themselves, to others, and to God, which had hurt their relationship with others and with God. And then he invited them into the water, cool, moving, wet. Water that was cleansing, washing, renewing. A physical experience to ritualize what was happening spiritually. John indicated that this was just the beginning. Something better was on the way. Someone more powerful than he was was on the way. John was clear about his role and his purpose. One day, Jesus came to the river Jordan. He wanted John to baptize him. And just as Jesus was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and the Spirit descending like a dove on him, and a voice came from heaven. You are my Son, the Beloved. With you I am well pleased. When Jesus was baptized, he was affirmed in his deeply personal relationship with God as a beloved child of God, someone in whom God delighted. You may recall as we entered Advent, we dug into this story. And traditionally, according to the lectionary, it's a story that is revisited the first week after Epiphany. So here it is again. What do we Anabaptists make of this story? Well, picking up on John's role, inviting inviting people to look at who they are, 
We are a community of Anabaptist Mennonites. Baptist is in our name. And baptism is at the core of shaping our identity. In our history, the way we got the name Anabaptist is that we were baptized again. During 16th century birthing, Anabaptist was a derogatory term used to identify radical reformers who's, who chose a rebaptism with water because according to their careful study of scripture, they believed baptism was for the repentant rather than for infants as an initiation into state citizenship. As early Anabaptist believers upon their adult confession of faith, we too have continued this practice of baptism upon confession of faith in Jesus Christ. A group of our youth are presently preparing for that step on their own faith journey. And it's been a uh, process that has needed some flexibility due to pandemic. And yet we continue learning together, surrounded by the wisdom of our tradition and our sacred story. A new year is a significant marker of a new beginning. And baptism is a significant marker of a new beginning. This congregation was formed by those who said, I want a fresh start. I am sorry for harm I have done or left undone. I want to follow Jesus. Upon baptism, promises to God and one another made to follow Jesus, they chose to study scripture, give and receive counsel, work for peace, and do this with the power of the Holy Spirit. And upon receiving new members, we each recommit to a membership cabinet. Our baptism promises and membership commitment shape our identity as fellow followers of Jesus. And our identity is shaped both individually and communally. Identity emerged as a common thread in my doctoral research as I asked pastoral colleagues about their lived experience adapting and responding to a changing context. I'll call him Thomas. He said, we thought we knew who we are. Now we need to find a new identity. Thomas's congregation had unexpectedly experienced the unearthing of a painful historical past. It was an event the congregation had journeyed many years previous, and the congregation firmly believed they had journeyed that experience with grace, with healing, restoration, and more. However, with the emergence of such a painful past, the congregation was thrust into an identity crisis. We thought we knew who we were. Who are we now? We need to find a new identity. I heard something similar from another pastoral leader. I'll call her Carol. She said, if you ask my congregation who we are, they would say, we have a pioneering spirit. Carol noted that this congregational identity emerged from its very beginnings. Decades previous, the congregation was formed by a group of progressive thinking followers of Jesus. They were risk takers and innovators. Carol added, the thing though with pioneers is that they become settlers. And now there is this realization that life is demanding something of us and these former pioneers are just plain tired of change. So what does this have to do with baptism in our journey through a pandemic? What does this have to do with us? Well, let's consider. Who would you say we are now? We knew who we were when we gathered for weekly worship here in this place and for our Christian education, when we chatted over coffee, made decisions in person around the boardroom table, as we shared potluck meals and gathered in small groups. Who are we now? Is that changing when we are safely a scattered body? Does our commitment to safety as an act of self-sacrificial love mean we cease being a people who have been cleansed by the waters of baptism, named beloved children of God, 
formed as a community of faith and called to further God's mission of restoration for all of creation. There is something significant about disorienting seasons, as my research participants shared. Disorientation challenges identity. Disorientation reveals competing priorities, that is, when our values and our practices don't quite align. Disorientation also shapes and transforms our identity. And this is true because identity is shaped by our experiences, our values, our beliefs, our tradition, our study of scripture, our relationships, and more. As we enter this new year, we know too well that we are journeying an unprecedented and unsettling time. How many of us can say, we were good at what we did. We knew what to do. Teachers could teach, nurses could nurse, pastors could pastor, grandparents could grandparent. Well, each of us is still good at what we were trained to do, but now we are also required to do things which we have never even considered before. It's a lot like learning new dance steps. Our ministry context, our work life, our home life, our family life is changing. It's shifting. And our footing doesn't feel very secure. We feel stretched. We feel challenged. Sometimes we're okay. Sometimes not so much. Sometimes we are frustrated. Sometimes we are curious. And sometimes we are just tired of change. When we get through this pandemic, what do we want to say we have done? This is a question that our board of directors, elders, and a number of our committees, including staff, have pondered recently. I firmly believe how we answer this question will inform the reshaping of our identity and confirming our identity as the people of God. When we get through this pandemic, what do we want to say that we have done? I have heard you say, we want to stay connected. We want to say we remember to stay kind. We spread our wings far and wide. We want to say we were patient. We listened. That we came to understand that the things we thought mattered don't. We want to say our priorities changed. Good people of God, the good news is that Jesus is baptizing us, filling us to overflowing with the power of the Holy Spirit. And this is the most important thing that we can rely on at this time. As we journey into this new year, new beginning, we want to recommit yet again to the core of our faith, to our relationship with Jesus, nurtured through worship and prayer, through scripture and spiritual companioning, and more, as articulated in our congregational membership commitment. What if each time we wash our hands, we remembered the promises we made at our baptism, and that we are people washed and cleansed in the baptismal waters where we experience forgiveness and an identity. Beloved, we are God's beloved children. This is core to our identity. We have been showered by the power of the Holy Spirit within and amongst us to do the good works for which we have been called like feeding the hungry and welcoming the stranger, praying for our enemies, sheltering the homeless. Beloved, as Jan Richardson writes, keep saying it. Beloved, keep saying it. And though it may sound strange at first, watch how it becomes part of you, how it becomes you as if you never could have known yourself to be anything else, as if you could ever have been other than this, beloved. 
A collegial friend recently shared something she discovered in the newly released Voices Together hymnal. It is a reaffirmation of baptismal commitments, and I want to read it to help us to remember who we are. God of covenant, when Jesus came up from the waters of baptism, you claimed him as your beloved child. Through Jesus, you claim everyone who comes to you as your beloved. As at baptism, we confess our faith in you today. By your spirit, I will abide in your word as wisdom for my life. By your spirit, I will give and receive counsel in the circle of the church. By your spirit, I will live without giving in to violence and take risks for what is good. By your spirit, I will share in your mission for the world with courage and hope. Strengthen us, God of love. Bind us together as your baptized people. Through Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. May you remember the baptismal commitments you have made. And in as you see yourself as Jesus sees you, beloved, may this identity become fuller as you are being strengthened in your faith by the promise of Jesus who is with you through the power of the Holy. Amen. Arise, your light is come. The Spirit's call, obey. Show forth the glory of your God, which shines on you today. Arise, your light is come. Fling wide the prison door. Proclaim the captive's liberty, good tidings to the poor. Arise, your light is come, all you in sorrow born. Bind up the broken-hearted ones and comfort those who mourn. Arise, your light is come, the mountains burst in song. Rise up like eagles on the Let us pray. God of new beginnings and endings and all moments in between, be with us this coming year. Through the waters of baptism, you have named us beloved. You confer our identity as your beloved children. May this identity grow and be shaped richly as we journey with you each and every day. May beloved flow as a refreshing stream to the deep places of our hearts and being. May we embrace a deeper understanding of our identity as your children and be open to how you reveal yourself to us, shaping and transforming us as your holy, called people. As we embrace this new year beginning, may we relearn lament and strive for joy. May we show up with courage and faithfulness for our lives and our callings as your people. May we be restored and renewed, the wilderness places becoming our cathedral and our altar. As we embrace this new year beginning, may we say goodbye to the things that do not serve us, the selfishness, the fear, the illusions of control, the bitterness, the doom scrolling, the self pity, the martyr complex, the us and them fire stokers. As we embrace this new year beginning, may we say hello to wisdom, to kindness, to justice, curiosity, wonder, goodness, generosity, possibility, peacemaking. 
As we embrace this year, we pray for the sick. We pray for those who grieve. We pray for those struggling to hold on to hope amidst isolation and loneliness. We pray for the lost. And we pray for our needs, which we name before you now. Good and gracious God, throw open the doors of our lives to the disruptive, wild, healing Holy Spirit. May this be a year of unclenched hands and new songs, vaccines and reunions, good food and laughter, kind endings and new beginnings. May we be given a mustard seed of faith. All this we pray in the name of Jesus. Amen. As children of God's salvation, we have united to sing God's praises. And now, as we conclude our time together, may you receive these words given for God's beloved children. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord turn his face toward you and give you peace. Amen. <laughs>